Oh, yeah. Take it away. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this very special webinar. Um, I am always amazed that we can also globally connect into webinars such as this. And it's my pleasure, um, in the absence of Julie Lindsay, to welcome Lee Zitz. Is that Zitz. right? Lee, Lee Zitz. Zitz. Sorry, Lee Zeitz from the University of Northern Iowa and Dr. David Stoller, or oh, you're both doctors, I see, from Eastern Connecticut State University. And we're going to explore together the wonderful world of global collaboration in higher education. So, Lee, I'll hand it over to you to tell or lead the discussion. Terrific. Thank you very much, Anne. And tonight we hope to, to explore some things where we're going to be talking about um, what exactly is, what do we mean by global collaboration? How does it address uh, our work in the higher education world? And we, we hope to show you some examples and things like that. Anything you want to add before we get started, David? Well, unfortunately, uh, we just heard from Dr. Julie Chen that her son is ill and she won't be able to attend. Okay. So, uh, feel free to ask questions along the way to fill the time. Sure. Uh, and I will. Uh, I hope that Julie will see this. Uh, uh, we'll see this and also re uh, add to our conversations in the future. Great. Yeah. I, that's a. That's too bad. We, we can't have her. But she um, is with us in spirit and uh, and all the projects and things like that that you did together and that you're in the process of doing. Um, before we get started, what I'd like to do is introduce you to Zoom. Zoom, I think, is the best video conferencing system around. And what I want to do is I'm, I'm going to, I, I really can't show you um, the tools that are across the bottom of my screen, but I'll tell you what to do. And you can see the things as we go through. If you'll take your, uh, oh, number one, if you take your, um, uh, your cursor and you move up to the right-hand corner, you'll see something that says speaker view or it will say gallery. What you want is you want to set it up as gallery because right now under speaker view, you'll see me in the middle and then you'll see three or I think four people across the top. Um, if you use the gallery, you can have up to 25 people on the screen at a time. Now, um, then also if we go down and you, you scroll across the bottom here, over here on the mute, and it's a good thing to keep things muted so that, you know, if the babies cry or something like that, it, it doesn't um, uh, affect us. You can turn off your video in case something's happening. Um, you can go out and invite people. I can manage participants. I can share my screen, and we're going to be sharing screens. That's how we show uh, PowerPoints and that sort of thing and share what, the things that we want to share. Um, there's a chat room, and if you click on that right now, that'll open up a chat room. Why doesn't everybody type in who they are and from whence you hail? And I'll put mine in too. And so we have, um, let's see, uh, Jared is from Northeast Iowa and I'm from Northwest Iowa. Uh, no, actually not from Northeast Iowa, Central. And then um, you're from Hawksdale, uh, Southeast Australia. And Dave is from um, Willam Willimantic, North Carolina. Okay. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Connecticut. Okay, so that's how the chat work room works. Um, I'm also recording this. And they now have breakout sessions, which is something that they hadn't had, but they're moving it along. Now, I'm not selling this. I just wanted to make sure we all know how to make this work as we go through. So I'm going to move over here, open up the, um, the PowerPoint, and there we go. Uh, take this. I'm going to share my screen. Nice thing is I can share it with computer sound, so when we watch the videos, we'll be able to hear them. And let me get back here. There we go. So um, global collaboration in higher education. So this is being brought to you by Dr. Lee Zeitz, that's me, Dr. David Stoloff, and by Julie Chen. And um, one of the thing, people we want to remember is we want to talk about uh, Julie Lindsay. Julie Lindsay is the president of our Global Collaboration PLN, and she's also the CEO for uh, Flat Connections. Unfortunately, she couldn't make it today because I guess she has multiple um, new jobs and things like that that are, are uh, taking her time, but, but that's great. Uh, she's here in spirit. And she's done a great job of leading us and, and moving us forth in, in this organization. Um, 
one of the things we want to do is we want to tell you something about the Global Collaboration Network. This is a group. Now we have, I, I think it's over 200 people in, in, the, uh, in the group, uh, probably about 50 active members. And what we do is we're connecting and trying to set up and, and make um, global collaboration, um, avail it to um, educators all over the world. We're looking at connecting educators, and there's a lot of pro programs and activities and things like that that are going to be coming up uh, as uh, throughout the years, and we'll, we'll keep you in touch with them. In January, um, Julie and Robert Furman are going to be doing another webinar here, and put that in your calendars, and it's called The Future of Change and Leadership for Global Collaboration. And then we also have uh, monthly uh, tweet chats, and uh, we don't have a new one um, scheduled yet for January, but we just had one on Hour of Code, which was done by Anne Merchin and then uh, Tony Alvieri uh, Barton. And so uh, if you, if you want to follow along on the things we're doing, I have the, our, our, hand, our, our um, uh, hashtag right there. It's ISTE Global PLN, and that's how we can connect. Okay. Um, and then we're going to be, uh, ISTE is a, um, a uh, it's an organization that's been around for scores of years. And, um, and it's, uh, it's also, it's now the name of the conference that they put on once a year. And this year it's going to be out in Denver, which is just a terrific place to have a conference. They have about five places where they do that. And we've been working on identifying what the possible events are going to be. Um, it's still something that ISTE is, is, is organizing with us. But the things that we're planning on is uh, we're, we have global uh, collaboration presentations. And I know that I, I've put in a couple, and we have a number of people who are going to be presenting about global collaboration. Um, birds of a feather. And that's where people who have similar interests, they don't need to be part of our PLN, but people who have interest in global collaboration get together and talk and make the connections that they need to make this happen in their classrooms. Um, the, we have a poster session where we spend about two and a half hours you know, standing there talking with people about the things that we do. And um, then we're also going to have a playground. I haven't quite figured out how this is going to be, but we want to make sure that we're going to be connecting with people who couldn't make it over to Denver for that. And so maybe you could be part of that too. And we've even been talking about a global collaboration breakfast. Now, that's an interesting idea. I mean, the image of that. I'm globally collaborating, eating my breakfast. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what that's going to look like. I'm not sure what it, what it's going to be. Um, Tonight's agenda, we want to begin by talking about what global collaboration is and then take a look at how that fits into higher education. Um, we've got a few examples. I have some examples of things that I, I've experienced, some other ones that uh, I know of. And then um, David is going to be sharing uh, what he's been doing with Julie in, in their Connecticut-Taiwan connection. And, um, and then we're, we'll open this up for questions, discussions, and it would be really great if you could help us identify where we want to lead this to. In other words, where, where is this going to go from here? Um, before I get started, does anybody have any questions? Okay. And uh, when we talk about global collaboration, we're talking about uh, the idea of, of what is collaboration. Now, collaboration is not, it's very different than cooperation. Well, not very different, but it is, is distinctly different from cooperation. The way I like to tell people about collaboration versus co uh, cooperation, if, you are, if you're building a house and everybody's lifting up the boards and they're putting it on the roof, that's cooperation because they're all doing exactly the same thing. If you're collaborating, the idea is that each person goes out, they have a specialty, they've got a strength, they go out, they do what they need to do, and they come back together and they collaborate to create a, a common product. And so that's, that's the whole idea that you work together you share your strengths, and then you, you use that towards a common purpose. Now, that, the thing with the global aspect is that it isn't just in your classroom, or it isn't just in, you know, and, and the interesting thing is the definition of global. Does global, I mean, if we're saying global collaboration, does that mean if I do this also with uh, the school down the street? or across, across town or something like that, is that global? I would like to um, position that, yes, it is, because we're talking about a connection. And really, when we talk about the difference, I mean, here we have Anne, who's in, in Australia. We have Jared, who's in Iowa. We have David, who's in Connecticut. And really, the, the difference of doing that is, is minimal. You know, the idea is that now we can connect, we can communicate, we can talk with our colleagues and friends uh, around the world. Now, 
here's a def, uh, something that the American Council on Education said. And in uh, the 21st century, higher education is explicitly and fundamentally a global enterprise. A prerequisite for success in this new era will be active, ongoing engagement on the part of colleges and universities in the United States with institutions around the world. And so they're saying that, you know, the whole idea when we talk higher ed, it is no longer the hallowed halls where people will simply go and, and sit down and, and, and talk face to face. We have to be looking at connecting, interacting and collaborating with other organizations and institutions around the world. And there's many ways in which that can happen. A um, couple of things I'd like to talk about. One of them is called global collabor uh, is called um, uh, the idea of research. I mean, if you think about it, collaborating is something that's been going on for, you know, many, many years. The idea, in fact, many times when we talk creativity, creativity, a single person can be creative, but when they bounce the ideas and things like that off others, their creativity becomes astounding. And one of the things I found when I was researching this was the term e-research. And I thought that was really interesting because what they're talking about is they're not just talking about research, which is the idea of, of just going out and doing things from a local uh, standpoint, but they're talking about putting it on a large scale where it's distributed nationally and globally. And it doesn't necessarily, uh, although when we talk about how do we connect now, obviously the way that we connect is through technology. We do it through the web, we do it through, um, mass media, we do it through social media. I mean, those are the ways in which we do it. But, um, and that's the way in which we connect people with resources, people to people, that's, that's how we make these contacts. Now there's an in, another interesting part, and that's another facet of e-research, which is cyber infrastructure. And when we talk about that, and I know you, you've seen, heard about these where um, they're actually using the uh, computing power of multiple institutions to be able to solve problems because, you know, the, the amount that it costs to, to get that kind of supercomputer or to do that um, is prohibitive. But what they can do is they, they actually talk about developing a cyber infrastructure so that people can, um, uh, so organizations can work with one another. And so we're talking about people working with one another. We're talking about using our cyber system to help them work with one another. And that's a, a one aspect of collaboration. Um, anybody have any, uh, I'm, I'm merely leading the discussion. Does anybody have any ideas or, or um, uh, things that they'd like to add about the idea of, of research being a collaborative process at, at the higher education level? And you just go ahead and talk. Go ahead, David. Uh, the, uh, recently, uh, <clears throat> I was contacted by a, a Saudi professor who did some, uh, he wanted to publish an article mm -hmm. uh, uh, about edu what educational technology was, the definition of educational technology. Mm -hmm. And he shared the article with 100 people that he had uh, identified as being uh, scholars in educational technology. Mm -hmm. And then he presented it to the British Journal of Educational Technology as a research paper. Hmm. And they were so confused that how could a hundred people write a paper? <laughs> so you got a byline on that? Well, they didn't accept it. And, oh. and now, he's, uh, now he's disputing it with them. But at the same time, they are having a dispute in their editor editorial board. And my take on all this is, is that uh, we are so used to thinking that research is something that is published in, in paper format. Uh, I mean, right now we're so used to it. It never happened in the past, and now it's in, you know, 200 years ago we didn't have journals, but, well, maybe we did, but they weren't the market and the and the capability as they are now. And and so the idea of, of people using a cyber infrastructure to do their research is an outstanding idea. It's just our culture hasn't ca caught up to it yet. Hmm. Yeah, very good point. I know um, I've got a, uh, one article that I wrote, and what I was doing is I was talking about it at some different conferences. And usually, when I have when I do a talk at a conference, I have a Google Doc that I've opened up, made available to everyone, and people can go in and they can play with it, you know, and, and add materials and things like that. And that way, it just kind of builds a, a resource for people. And um, what I did on this one is I had an article that I'd written and I put it up online and I said, please go in there and modify it, you know, 
edit it. And anybody who edits it and you leave your name and your name on there, I will uh, acknowledge you in the article. And unfortunately, I only had a couple people do it, but they're acknowledged, you know. And so, I mean, this the whole idea of uh, crowdsourcing and doing that sort of thing is, is really something completely different. Now, the next level, we talk about program institutional collaboration. Now, uh, we have online degrees. Um, that I'm uh, David, you, you have, and Anne, you have uh, online degrees in your, your organizations, don't you? you? No, I'm actually in a secondary school, so right. the students are face to face. But we do have virtual students learning environmental science. So in a way, it's kind of like online learning. But Lee, I'd like to go back to your point before about the um, crowdsourcing. Mm -hmm. I find that different cultures and religions and countries view research differently and look at the same topic quite differently. Mm -hmm. So that when we pull all of our thoughts and collections, we've got the global view rather than that local, maybe biased view that we might, you know, just have because of the nature of it. Very good point. I mean, then that that's the idea of the, the global collaboration. We get multiple um, points of view that we can then use to to even unearth new ideas. Um, and so we have these online degrees. And now I have an online degree. In fact, Jared Borman, who's with us here, uh, he was one of my students, and he received he earned a uh, a master's of in instructional technologies through uh, completely online. I think I, we only I only saw you for one week. We run him on campus at the beginning. I only saw him then. And he just looks much smaller than I remember him. But uh, <laughs> the idea is that, you know, we have programs and uh, there are programs all over the, the, the world where the things are online and you don't have to be in that uh, city, that state, or even that country to take those classes. I'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, joint degrees. This is something I know when I was down in Malaysia, I lived in Malaysia for a year. Um, there were a number of joint degrees then and, and even now they, they have them where it's, it's like a, a one in three where, you know, you do one, one year um, in Malaysia and then you do three years in, I, uh, or, or, I'm sorry, two and three where it's, it's two years in, in, in Malaysia and one year in, in the U.S. or something like that where it isn't necessarily online, but it's a, you know, it is global collaboration or what you're doing is you're connecting with other people. You don't necessarily have to, um, I mean, you can actually do global collaboration in a face-to-face -face format. We, you know, and it's so easy to just kind of get geeked out and you're, you're talking about how, you know, everything has to be online, much like what we're doing right now. But more importantly, you know, where people have an opportunity to discuss things and, and to work with one another on a face-to-face -face, uh, level, that works well. Uh, we, I know our, our school has study abroad, which um, uh, does that sort of thing. But the problem is that pe um, other people get caught up saying, well, if I want to learn about people, I have to go someplace. We don't. We have, we have the, the technical aspects to do that. Branch campuses. This is something we're out in different countries. You can have schools that have, you know, small organizations of teachers that go to, out there and teach. And then even the international study centers are set up where they're smaller than a branch campus. You know, it could just be two or three teachers that are out there and then other teachers that come out on, a, on a, an annual basis or, you know, they come out and visit, they teach, and then they, then they leave. Do any of you have any situations in, in where you teach and what you do that um, deal this kind of institutional collaboration? No? Okay. Now, um, oops. Let me, uh, along the idea of those master's degrees, I'd like to point out that this is a group. Um, this is actually the master's degree group that we have right now. Uh, they're kind of a, a, a screwy group, I have to tell you that, because uh, you'll notice that this was taken on Halloween night. <laughs> and uh, so what they, all, well, actually, it was taken the day before Halloween, because we wouldn't do it on Halloween. We want to go out with the kids. But so um, these are our folks. The, uh, all of these students are from around um, around Iowa. We had one student who was out in, um, in Arizona for a little while, and then she came back. But you can see that this is at, at 6 o'clock at night. Um, and we, we run from six until until nine. Uh, it's at six o'clock at night. They're they're working. They're um, having a lot of fun, and you know you notice we even have kids that are involved in it. And one of the things I find when I'm doing something at six o'clock at night is that we actually have matriculation through mastication. And uh, so I, you know we're we're eating dinner and stuff like that, but that's okay because the idea is that we we 
I really enjoy having face-to-face -face opportunities like this, um, where you do online learning, where it's all through discussion groups and things like that, and you never even see one another, makes a big difference. I mean, I, I, I don't like that too much. I, I like to have it where I can actually work with, with people on this. Um, and so, like I said, this is a group that's a two-year program, same kind of thing as Jared had. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, we have, um, let's see, so we've got, got this two-year group. Now, there's another um, group. In fact, we, at you and I, we have a few different um, degrees that are provided through uh, distance education. And this is one where I, I have an opportunity to work um, with our um, educational leadership group. And interestingly enough, this was a class that I, I met with them on Tuesdays. Um, the group in the upper left-hand corner are the ones that include South Korea, Nepal, uh, Fiji, uh, foreign places like Texas and Arizona. And we met at six o'clock in the morning and the guy in Texas wanted to meet at six o'clock because then he could go to school and do his, you know, his teaching after that. So it fit very nicely into what he's doing. But, you know, for all these people, it was, um, uh, well, let's see, like um, Australia is 13 hours ahead of us, I think. And so the idea was that it, it was nine o'clock at night or seven, eight, nine o'clock at night for them. And then down at the bottom, you'll notice that the 10 o'clock crew, uh, we had them from Germany, Egypt, uh, Saudi Arabia, Iowa. Um, once again, it was an opportunity to work with them and work with them face to face as well as, as on an online basis. Um, when we talk about the different things that we're doing, um, we talk about um, these are the different types of, of exchanges you might have. Uh, mentoring, um, intercultural exchange, which I think is a very important one. That's what David's going to be talking about in a minute. The global classroom. Oops, I misspelled that one. Uh, collaborative creating, creation and, and writing, impersonations. Um, that's, a, that's a great one. Uh, when we talk about collection, I mean, the idea is if you had something where like acid rain is something from many, many years ago. I had high school uh, students who were using their Apple IIs to record the, the uh, acid rain uh, amounts that they were, they were measuring um, on a project that had never been done by scientists, but it was being done by, uh, um, by students by simply going out and measuring them with litmus paper. So in other words, there's a whole variety of things that we can create. So the question is, what do you do? Now, um, I, since there's only four of us, <laughs> three of us are presenting. <laughs> anything special? And, and I know you're working at the AEA there, uh, Jared. Anything special that you do along those lines? I wouldn't say there's anything necessarily on the, the global spectrum other than when I work with teachers. Um, the main thing that I try to do as far as getting their kids to connect globally uh, is the main thing. And through that, the, I would say the blogging forum is the best way for a lot of teachers to get students connecting through uh, on a global scale. So we've had success with that and we've had some teachers really embrace that idea and run with it. That's great. That's great. So um, here's something. Uh, this is something that came out of um, Julie, Julie Lindsay and Vicki Davis's book. And this is, I, I think, you know, you've all heard of um, Bloom's Taxonomy and the whole, they actually created a global connection uh, ta taxonomy. And we'll call global connection and global uh, collaboration similar. Um, and so as you start at the bottom level, that's an intra-connection where you're actually just doing projects in your own class. And you could, you could be doing things digitally, but, you know, more, more you're just kind of talking with each other. Interconnection is where you do it within the same school or within a district. Um, I, had a, I was working at a school once, and they actually had um, students in different classes impersonating the roles of slaves, um, Confederate uh, soldiers, and Union soldiers, and they were writing letters to each other based upon that, and they didn't know who they were. You know, that's, that's an interesting. Manage global connection. Now, that's basically when we're talking about the teacher managing and having a, her, his or her group working with another group. Uh, we talk about student to student. This is where we have the teacher managing it, but the students are working with one another. That's something that David, David and, um, Chris and um, Julie had, had been working on. Um, and then finally, we talk about the ultimate, where we're talking about student to student, where they're actually doing and running the program themselves. Do you see? And then there's actually two different channels that are happening here. On one case, we're talking geographic. Geographic starts out right here in my classroom, then into my school, into my district, into my state, into my world. We also talk about project management. 
And where is the onus of, of, of um, control? Well, at the very beginning, it's the teacher. And the teacher releases that, that opportunity until finally, it's a student to student where they're actually working at the highest level of Bloom's taxonomy and being creative and, and, and working on that. So I, I think this is a, a pretty impressive piece. Um, a project that we did was we, I, I worked with Cliff Mims, who was down at the University of Memphis in Tennessee. And I had a class called Selection Integration of Inter uh, Instructional Technology. And um, I had 18 graduate students. They uh, had instructional technology the third semester. And so they actually had a lot of background on using technology and that sort of thing. He had 17 graduate students and they were um, working on instructional design. In many cases, they were just starting the program. So they didn't have that kind of background. And they were using, uh, their, their class was on using social media. So what we had is we had similar types of people, but they didn't necessarily have the same skills and the same background, but that kind of made it very interesting. Um, what we did is I challenged them. We had gone through looking at 21st century learning and the, you know, we could actually give them a test and see if you know this, but more importantly, what we did is we asked them to create a proposal that um, dealt with 21st century learning. And we asked them to go out and, um, and create this. And instead of making it a proposal where you're writing something, we asked them to create something that was a, a multimedia mashup. Because it doesn't make any sense if you're trying to do something in 21st century and you're still using the 20th century idea of a 15-page paper. And so what they did is they created some things. And interestingly enough, it just so happens that this is something that Jared Borman uh, and his team created. And if I go over here and take a look, um, we'll – hang on a sec. Um, this is what he created, and it's a um, – uh, it's a Prezi presentation. And you notice that what they did is they went through and there were certain specifications that were expected to, to happen. Here's the team. And so what they were doing is they were collaborating. They did not meet face to face. They met online. They were doing these sorts of things. They all happened to be in Iowa, but more importantly, um, that they could have just as been, well been any place in the nation. They're talking about the school setting is rural, is block scheduling. They're looking at this and they're going out and actually creating it. They're taking a look at the demographics. And I see that I'm way behind, um, but it's multicultural. And they're going out and they're, they're saying, this is the, the classroom that we're envisioning, a removable furniture. So this is the process that they're doing. And so as, as I said, uh, they're talking about a flip classroom and the most important thing was that the students were envisioning the opportunity of tomorrow. So that, that was pretty much uh, what they did with me, the um, proposal. Um, do you have uh, 30 seconds you'd like to add to that, Jared? I just got to say that it was a lot of fun to be able to collaborate with uh, other people. Granted, it wasn't across nations, but even across states, those perspectives are so important to bring into. And the reason why we chose Prezi specifically is because we could still collaboratively create and meet at the same time within the same time zone. And all of us could work on this. So basically, there are four of us, but we each took one section of this picture and we were piecing it together in order to bring the whole thing together. And, and, that, and, and trying to find um, similar tools that people knew how to use, that, that was really an issue, wasn't it? It was. There was one teacher that um, was not familiar with Prezi at all, but due to her digital literacy skills that she already had established, she caught on to it fairly quickly. Terrific. Um, another one that we did is, is they, I had a group that actually created um, basically a small academy. You know, through this process, they, and, and I said, you get $15 million. You can get up to 15, you know, so money's no object. They created an academy, and I, I don't have time to go through it right now. We'll make it available. But it was one in which they could go through, and uh, it had videos, and it had a, a whole curriculum that was developed. So the idea was opening up the world. Um, this is the uh, Mystery Skype, which was done by Eva Brown up in uh, Red River College, and she has a teacher education program. She's very active in our organization, our collaborative, uh, global collaboration organization. And they're doing mystery Skype, where what they do is they turn on Skype, and there's somebody at the other end, and they, the, the kids or the t uh, students are, in, are, are trying to figure out who's at the other end. Um, what are the benefits and, and challenges? We well, can take a look at that. The idea of benefits are things we've talked about where we're connecting with people. We're looking at multicultural perspectives. We're building independent learners. But the challenges are really interesting. 
because you know uh, the first challenge is to try to connect with somebody else. Uh, the second channel is maintaining those connections. Once you make them, you know, trying to make the connections between the students is difficult because things change. I know I was doing one in Pol with Poland, and we had a real problem with that. Um, Collaborative group dynamics. How well do these groups work? I mean, the idea is that when you have a group, you don't want it all to be in, in Connecticut or all, all to be in Iowa. You want to make it so you, it's split between two different groups. Um, uh, you coordinating uh, skill sets, politics, and most importantly, time zones. That's something we can never make any difference on. So um, having said all that, uh, it's now my opportunity to hand this over to David. And uh, if he could, uh, he's, he's going to actually take over. I'm going to click on this. And he is going to take over control. And this is something we, we practiced earlier today. So in a moment, um, actually, OK. Uh, you cannot start while the other participant is sharing. Oh, I'm sorry. So I stopped sharing. Okay. There you go. Yeah, now I should be able to go. Um, oh, I should be able to see it up here, shouldn't I? Ah, so I what's going on? Okay, are, are you finding down there where it says? Um, uh huh. Share screen. Well, anyway. Let's see, maybe it does have to be. I'll tell you what. Would you like me to just guide it, and you, you can simply look at no, it? No, I, I can okay. I can I can do it this way. Uh, I think I th I think we need to have this sh the screen shared, and then you can take over. I think. Okay, share screen. Oh, well, okay. no, I, I I need to share a screen. Well, well, I can do it from here. Oh, that that could work, right? Can do you know where where the link is? Do you have the yeah, link there? Yeah, right here. Great. Okay, okay. so you, you take it over. Okay. Well, here we go. I uh, just want to show you, this is a website. The address is, uh, is let's see if I've written, written it down. Oh, oh, oh okay. Uh, this is a International Connections Education. I've been doing this for a while. And um, the, uh, you can see I, uh, uh, and Lee, Lee mentioned the, one of the opportunities for International Connections deals with uh, global field experiences. I've been taking students to Jamaica. Uh, for, uh, for th uh, I went on three trips, trying to get another trip going, but it uh, students have to pay for it, so it becomes very difficult. Uh, so we haven't got another trip going. That was part of what I was doing this week, getting other trips. But I, we've had other uh, uh, global field, uh, global experiences. Um, uh, some people from Easton have gone to Nepal for a trip. There was a study tour in in Turkey. Um, uh, the, there was a, a Japanese Studies Institute in Honolulu we were involved with, but the international connections I've been involved with uh, since 2000, uh, since uh, spring of 2010, I had some experience. Uh, we experienced the connections with um, uh, uh, a school in Russia. And what we would do is exchange PowerPoint presentations on what we thought was about Russian life, and they would uh, uh, sh uh, share it with us. Uh, we would, um, and then there was the University of Ma uh, Mascara in Algeria. We made connections with them. We'd have ePal exchanges, and a school in uh, Taiwan. So we had those experiences in 2010, and then. Um, Pardon me. Oh, oh, I gotta go up a little higher. In uh, spring of 2011, in summer of 2011, we had some experiences with uh, uh, presentations on Russia. These are the students' PowerPoint presentation in Costa Rica and China, and we would connect across with uh, schools in those countries and have them critique what we were doing. So really, on some level, it was an exchange. It wasn't a true exchange. It was exchange of ideas within classes with other classes in other countries. Um, uh, but the one I want to talk about tonight is about a recent exchange we've had with 
uh, with the Chinese Cultural uh, Culture University and Eastern Connecticut State University. And here is an opportunity for you, everyone to take a stretch if they like. I'm going to show this little video here. Let's see if it's going to work. Can you hear it? Nod your head if you yeah. can hear it. So stretch a little if you like. So you have to guess what it's a scene of. Hong Kong. Well, it's a, it's a Chinese culture university. That's Eastern. It's an artistic version of Eastern. They they pride themselves on rainbows. Wow. Here's a map of their campus. And that is Eastern, actually. It's a little video on that give you a sense of I used it to try to promote my students to get involved the idea for this project and if you ever go to this website uh, you'll see uh, that uh, this is a, a video that they did in the uh, Chinese Cultural University very nice video um, I tried to uh, get my students interested in this project um, we've done this this is uh, some of the things we've done uh, do you know about ePals and have you ever used ePals? And no, I know about them, but haven't used them. Yeah, ePals was a system of connecting uh, schools throughout the world. Let's see if it's going to come up nicely. Uh, uh, it was. It's going through revisions right now. It, but that's how we connected. Julie Chen and I connected using ePals, I posted, a, I had an undergraduate class that I wanted to connect with other people throughout the world. And uh, Julie responded, and that's how we connected. And we connected uh, just uh, maybe about uh, six weeks or eight weeks ago, we connected together. But get, this gives you a sense of what ePals looks like. It, um, it students from different countries go on and the, you can connect with them. It's supposed to be a uh, a kind of a, a controlled environment you have to apply to get a uh, to get a, um, a visa a, a visa right thank you very much that's a better idea apply to get an account but a visa just as well and then so it's supposed to be controlled so people can't be uh, prowling it so to speak um, but you can see you can set it up by country and by age range and languages and everything else and so epals was a uh, uh, the tool that Julie and I use to connect with each other. Is that how you found her? That's how, yeah, I sent out the message and she uh, responded. And that's how, that's how we connected for this project. Um, David uh, and Lee, we the now idea have well, It turns out on. that they were first year students at the Chinese Company University. Yes, Anne? We now have Julie with us in the room. Really? Julie Lindsay. Oh, well, wow, good. Well, hi, Julie Lindsay. No, it's Julie Chen. Julie Chen. Yes. Is she here? We we don't we don't have a, a visual on her, but uh, she's there. Oh, is she is she chatting. Um, hi. Yes. Good. Good. Well, I have to get my where's my chat function here. Um, well, I uh, go down, go down to the bottom. You'll see, uh, something at the bottom that says chat. Yeah. Let's stop the share. Okay. And I get my chat up. Oh, good. good. Julie's here. Okay. Julie. Um, so, uh, Julie, uh, uh did she, did she have a we can follow you, what you're, we can follow you on the chat. Um, okay. Let's see now. Uh, what should I do here? What's going on? Well, I mean, let, let's see if she has a microphone. 
and hello there she ah, is Julie. good <laughs> microphone working yes oh great <laughs> well they want you take over for a while so that uh oh well, i'm I actually, Julie, I, we, uh, I'm, I'm so glad to hear from you. I, I uh, hope your son's feeling better. Yeah, I, uh, he's feeling better, so that's why we'll be able to come. But I'm sorry for the delay, though. No problem, no problem. We're glad you're here. Mm. Um, so David was just talking about how he was using ePals to connect, and, and you know that you guys met each other online, um, yes. and that's how things got started. Could you tell us some some ideas from your perspective as to how things went? Uh, well, um, th uh, this was a freshman English uh, reading course for my freshman students. So I think uh, this will be a good experience for some of my students since most of them do not have uh, this kind of experience with, um, with native speakers. So okay. that's how it gets started. And uh, it was just by chance that I was on the the uh, the website and then there was this opportunity for the global connection project so I was just really glad to have this opportunity to do that what is it that you teach um, I teach um, general education course uh, most most of my most of my uh, classes are general education courses mm -hmm. um, but for this specific class is for um, English majors for freshman students great okay um, David, why don't, why don't you two uh, talk with each other about, about the, what, what you did? Well, what we did was we first gathered, uh, first uh, collected email addresses of all our students. And then Julie grouped her students into six groups, right, Julie? Correct. And they were on particular topics that she thought that our students in, in, at Eastern Connecticut would be interested in, in learning more about. And I think we, uh, we do have your PowerPoint that we can, we can go over your PowerPoint if you want. Sure. Let's see. Yeah, I can, I'll get a copy of you, it. You, 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 want, you want me to take care of that? Yeah, do you have a copy of the PowerPoint? I have it. And uh, I'll, I'll simply share my screen. Yeah, that'd be good. And then Julie could talk about her PowerPoint. Good. And I'll tell you what, is it okay if we do this and, and rather than the whole screen? Because this, this makes it easier to, make, to, to see what's happening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Julie, you just start talking and I'll move things along as, as, you, as you tell me. So will I be able to click on the PowerPoint? I, I can click on it for you. Oh, okay, okay. so the, the, the next slide. Um, so basically, um, some of the background um, for my purpose for this study is that I think uh, uh, it's part of uh, online literacy, uh, new literacy of online reading program. So I would like my, uh, according to the researchers, they are saying that this is very um, important aspect for this new generation for them to develop their ability in ident identifying important questions, locating information, analyzing, synthesizing information, and be able to communicate this information with others. So this is part of my um, uh, intent, uh, my purpose at the beginning of this, uh, this project. Uh, please click on the next slide, thank you. And so this uh, is the instructional design is divided into uh, four uh, phases. One is to build a very good support with the uh, native speakers by using students will be able to introduce them first by introducing to introduce themselves and then choose whatever social network sites they feel comfortable communicate with the native overseas students. Phase two uh, may uh, mainly focus on uh, students will be able to discuss some of the culture related topics with um, the the overseas students. For example, they will be able to um, look up info, uh, uh, related information online on their own culture because most of my students, they probably do not know how to um, explain those, um, their local culture to um, the, the native speakers. So they have to look information online and be able to select important information 
ask questions to make culture com to make uh, culture comparisons, and um, I also ask my students for feedback. They'll be able to give me some of the feedback because through our school website. And phase three focuses on uh, students will have a discussion with overseas students, and gradually they will develop this uh, cross culture project uh, with uh, overseas with um, native speakers by comparing and contrasting the similarities and differences between cultures. And the, the last phase will be a, a wrap up um, and saying goodbye and students will turn in their self reflection at the end of the semester. Okay, and then the next slide. There you go. Okay, some of the topic my students folk, th these are the topics my student um, talks about at the beginning of the semester, but some of these topics have changed. For example, um, I think group G, they have, they, they have changed the topic into college student lives because after their discussion with overseas students, they've asked them, uh, um, they asked them a, lot, a lot about their college life the student think that this is relevant to their to their college relevant topics. So they they had some of my group have changed their topic since the, 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 these are uh, the topics they chose at the big, beginning of the semester. It looks like food is very important to them. Yeah, <laughs> especially for the Taiwanese people. That's mm. for sure. Mm. And I collect. Um, some uh, uh, so the participants are 32 students and um, originally there were seven groups but we divided it but then due to the number of students they uh, we have six groups at the end and data collection we I gave them a, a survey uh, from uh, online I got it from an, a, a Taiwanese researcher he did it into culture competence uh, use uh, in the cultural competence scale, and I want to compare the the difference at the beginning and at the end. But since this, um, I probably would be interested in doing it for another semester, so I will be able to see uh, the difference uh, more at the end of uh, uh, the post test. And so far, I've talked to some of the students, and students will turn in there self-reflection uh, at the end of this month. So this is so far I've collected uh, the methodology. And so this was the survey that I used uh, um, 2014 study. Um, I delete original survey, I delete three irrelevant statements. I can eat with what others in culture diverse situations. So this was irrelevant and modify the way I dress. So this probably will not be related to the, the, this culture, uh, global connection project. So the remaining seven questions are uh, 27 questions focused on uh, those four factors, knowledge of intercultural interaction and of affective orientation to inter intercultural interaction, self-efficacy in intercultural situations and behavior performance intercultural interaction, display of intercultural consciousness. Um, this is at the beginning of the pre-survey. So as you can see, most of my students, their affective factor in having this intercultural interaction with uh, um, native speakers is very high, 4.385. This is a five Likert scale. Okay, the lowest ranking, and so this is the highest, and the lowest one out of 20, um, seven question is that I can effective use English to communicate with other people of different culture backgrounds. So my students think that their English proficiency may influence, may have an impact on how effective they communicate with others, um, especially native speakers. And when I talk with my students, this is one of their major concern. Um, but it is also, um, I consider it's also a strength because uh, some of my students, they were trying to uh, write up their postings, they would look up, um, uh, they would be very um, cautiously uh, focusing on the word they use, they would read 
um, other articles online to make sure that they have their sentences written correctly. And, I, and so this is, I think this is a, a, a good experience for my students. And, and the next slide, so these are some of the feedback that I get uh, from my students and in, uh, 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 during the midterm, after the midterm, which is at the beginning of November. So some of the strength they consider is that um, students will be able to build a very good rapport with their, they think that they have developed very good friendship with um, those uh, native speakers. They constantly chat with them. They think that they have uh, uh, friends overseas. So this is a very good experience. So they'll be able, so they feel comfortable talking to them um, online. So um, students learning engagement in searching, sympathizing communication information because they, in order to talk to, hello? Okay, yes. in, order, in order to talk to students overseas, students will have to look up some related information online and be able to use their own words to, uh, um, to use their own phrases to uh, paraphrase the sentence in order to um, talk with um, uh, their uh, 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 group members. So they, uh, another strength will be they know um, more of the other culture. They develop more war knowledge. But the weaknesses are that some of my students feel frustrated because they didn't receive replies. Mm. And another, as I mentioned earlier, earlier, was that their English proficiency they consider is low. So some of the words were uh, they consider to be very difficult to describe. And also another concern they have is um, how do they communicate effectively with native speakers online um, and how to develop their project. So those are their major concerns. And some of the pedagogical implications um, I'm hoping that as a result from this project will be um, how uh, students select their topic. This probably has to be taken into consideration. And study of relevant information from various sources. I noticed that some of my students only look up um, inf uh, information from Chinese website and they, they try to translate that into English. So another uh, thing that I could do in the future would be how to help my student to search for uh, information, uh, 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 search multiple uh, sources online, uh, irrelevant sources information online. And, and at the end will be some of the other approaches for intercultural discussions. For example, they may want to put some of their photos, uh, share some of their uh, personal stories related to the topics and or some do some of the use some of the interview methods and um, I noticed that um, uh, at the end of the semester some of my students uh, noticed um, that their uh, over their uh, some of the native speakers asked them 40 questions and so as a result they think well they can and they rec they have rec uh, so as a result, they, my students think, well, then they can answer those 40 questions they recorded and then they do it as a, as a, as a group. So, this, so as a result of that from this project, I think some of my students have got uh, creative ideas in doing projects. So, That's great. Yeah. Um, I'll stop sharing and let's get back and, and get into the discussion. Um, what what challenges, uh, both David and, and Julie, what, what are the challenges that you have experienced on, on how this works? I, I think Julie is correct that we had trouble with our students connecting with each other. That became a problem. Um, uh, the, there was a problem with time, different time zones, and there was a problem of, uh, of actually the use of email. I, I don't know if you found this, Julie, but my students didn't want to use email. They went straight to Facebook. Did you find that too, Julie? Uh, Facebook, yes. My students, they would prefer to use Facebook as well. And, 
And initially we had uh, grouped them by uh, groups of 10, five uh, CCU students and five ECSU students. Mm -hmm. And not, not, uh, they didn't, they quickly divided themselves up into pairings. Individual students would contact each other. Uh, so I think it was a little confusing. I don't know how, when we do this in the future, how we can organize it so that um, we have a, uh, good connections. But I, I understand also that some of my students really got very involved with your students on a, right. on a very effective emotional level. Mm. Did you find that too, Julie? Right, right. My, um, yeah, uh, my student, uh, one of my students mentioned that uh, uh, um, she uh, talked to one African-American girl and she said this is her very first uh, African American uh, friends that she has ever made in her life. Really? Yeah, and she has very close. She thinks that this is she has developed. She has she's um, very um, open to this friends that she has developed a very good friendship with. So, um, and they used the Facebook. Uh, I, I learned from that the African American student oh. that. Uh, that they were using a version of Facebook that allowed them to do like Zoom. They could talk to each other in real time, video mm -hmm. and audio, on their phones. Wow, and that, that I didn't know. <laughs> and that because the student had took the bus to school using, uh, the bus had Wi-Fi, uh -huh. they, <laughs> they would have discussions on the bus. Wow. <laughs> oh, right, right. You sent me the, 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 the transcript. I saw it, right. Yeah. That they would use it, they would use uh, the Facebook uh, video chat mm -hmm. and have the discussion while she was going to school. Mm. And now, they, do you see this as a, a positive or negative? I think it's amazing. I think it it uh, the uh, all, it, it it tells me that uh, email connections are old school and old fashioned, <laughs> and we now have to go into some more Facebook connections and even beyond that. Right. Okay. You know, and even the, the notion of using Zoom with your phone can be <laughs> potential, uh, potentially interesting. Did any of your students use WhatsApp? Uh, I don't think so. No, I, my students are not familiar with the, that. That, that that's, that's one where you can, you can do texting through um, the Internet. Oh. And it's free. It's, it's WhatsApp, A-P-P. Mm -hmm. and it's W H A T apostrophe S A P P. So is um, it popular in the United the States? Um, it, it, well, it's it's popular for an international basis. Oh. Um, and and so and because it's free. Mm. And what's and it's really cool because you can I think you can turn it into a video conference as, you know after you've done that. Oh. It was what's app. Lee and Julie, we use WeChat with China. So it's like WhatsApp, but it's called WeChat because it's not blocked. Oh, in I China. see. Okay, and it's only with China? Uh, yeah, but you can use it with anyone. It's just popular in China. WeChat, sorry, WhatsApp and Viber are popular here. Now, WeChat is, is really popular in China, isn't it, Julie? Uh, well, in Taiwan... In Taiwan, um, we use Line. Most of my students use Line. How do you spell that? L I. L I N E. Oh, okay. Hmm. And that's kind of a Facebook. That's um, that is um, that students can post and they receive they they receive uh, sorts of like text messaging as well. They can upload photo. They can talk so it's it's the same it sounds like it's the same as whatsapp and wechat that's great mm. well so you guys actually had them I mean when you when you get students it's kind of like we were talking about those different levels of communication it mm. looks like like you guys reach number five number five yeah well <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll show you later i'll, I'll, send, I'll send you the the, the, the um uh, powerpoint now but it had oh. it's basically a taxonomy and at, uh. the bottom, at the bottom, you have something happening in the classroom 
um, and it's all directed by the teacher and his teacher students in the classroom talking at the mm -hmm. very top level you have students meeting students and working with students and no teacher involved right right I think that's that's uh, our ultimate purpose was to have uh, student-led discussion I think learning is to develop learning um, autonomy as well right Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, do we have um, some closing um, comments and things like you know, we've, we're coming to eight o'clock and anybody have any closing comments they'd like to share? David? Well, it was a great hearing you, Julie, and, and uh, I hope you're, everyone in your family, your son and you and everyone stays well. And, Thank uh, you. And I hope we can continue this project next year because it, it certainly was very interesting and took us in directions I had never expected. Right. I, I would, uh, it will be a great honor to have this, uh, to continue this global connection project with you the next semester. So, so is it possible to do it in the next semester then, David? <laughs> we can try and, and maybe uh, Lee can get involved too. Sure. Uh, or uh, Jared too or, or, or Anne and uh, everyone could get involved. Uh, we can certainly try to do it. Um, yeah. Uh, we have new students. That's the issue because it's a new semester. But I guess you'll have new students too, right? Um, I have the same group of students next uh, oh, next semester. Okay. So this is a one-year course. Good. Well, so my okay. student will be very experienced the second time then. Right. <laughs> Julie, do you have any words of wisdom that you want to leave with the the audience? <laughs> no <laughs> words of wisdom. <laughs> I think as a teacher, I'm learning. Um, for example, I, I'm not so familiar. I'm not a tech savvy kind of person. So this is something new for me. So I'm learning as well. I'm learning a lot from my students. And they are teaching me, actually they are teaching me how to use those new technology. <laughs> That's the best way to do it. Don't don't be, don't be an expert, Jared. Um, as we come to a close here, any epiphanies, uh, ahas, things like that as you were coming through? Between both of those uh, great stories, and then um, the one session that I sat in on uh, at iTech there, Dr. Zeitz, um, you know, just gains a new perspective for me as far as what kind of global connections we can make at all levels, not just higher education, but even at the secondary level, all the way down to elementary, even so. Um, opening up the doors for kids to learn in different environments, for sure. Oh, I, I, I must say that I think the global collaboration and connections is, is essential. This is what we have to do because um, this is the way our world is. And if we sit back and don't do that, then we end up with a, a, a situation where we're, we're teaching. We have a vacuum between reality and what we're allowing to occur in our classroom. So um, I'd like to thank everyone for, for being part of this, and I'm really excited you. you showed up, Julie. That really, <laughs> really topped things off. And, and Tony, are, are you still there, Tony? Yeah, I am. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Do you have any comments or anything, closing comments you'd like to share? No, it's just always good to hear. I, I've done this from elementary through high school. I'm at a new high school, so I'm trying to get people on board right now. But it's just always good to hear how other people are doing it and uh, the successes and the failures because we learn from it all. Sure. And where are you, Tony? I'm in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Yeah. Colorado. Oh, hey, so we're going to be coming over to your place for ISTE, huh? Yeah, definitely. That'll be fun. Okay. Great. Well, and um, let's call it an evening. And uh, I want to thank everybody for being part of this. Those of you out in TV land who are watching this at, at a later date, I hope that you'll be coming to our, our um, upcoming uh, um, presentations. And as I said, on a monthly basis, we have uh, presentations that are going to be webinars as well as uh, tweet chats. And we'll uh, make those available for you to know about. Please follow the hashtag. It's I-S-T-E global pln and that way you can find out what's happening thanks a lot we'll see you later thank you thank you